this for everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We give God thanks and praise for tonight's Bible study, and we're just going to have a, just a short moment of prayer, and then we will go into our regular Bible study tonight. But thank God for those who are on Facebook who will join us. Again, this is Bethel Tabernacle Bible Study, which we do every Tuesday at 7 p.m. I'm asking you to go notify your friends, your families, let them know that Bible study is about to begin. You've got to get up and go notify your friends, call somebody, text somebody, let them know that we are on. Notify all your friends who are online right now. Just go let them know that we are on and that our Bible study is about to begin. We also want to take a moment to pray and uh, in praying, we want to lift up those persons in our families who need healing, those persons in our friends, um, whatever circle that you're a part of, um, lift them up in prayer. Lift up the people of your neighborhood, the people of your church. Lift up those who are a part of your network, all right? Um, anybody who you know will need prayer. Just lift them up. Lift up your leaders. Lift up your pastors. Lift up those who you know, you know, you know, in a hospice, in a hospital, in a nursing home, wherever they may find themselves, those who are traveling. As you see, we are having helicopter crashes. We are having this accident, that accident. So we want to lift them up in prayers. Lift up anyone you know who is in ministry, who is struggling right now. Lift up those who just hoping that someone can pray for them, all right? So we want to do that tonight as we give God thanks and praise, and then we go right into the Bible study. So it's going to be a quick moment of prayer, and then we go right in. It's going to be a wonderful Bible study tonight, and so it's, it's going to be real good. So notify your friends. Go get them, go get them, go get them, go get them, all right? You've got to do it. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. Go get your pastor. Go get your stewards, your trustees. Go get your missionaries. Go get your Sunday school or your church school president, the superintendent, your choir people. Go get them. Start a watch party right now. Amen. Go do it right now. Go call your bishop, the bishop who has one church around the corner. Go call him. He needs extra churches. Go call him. <laughs> go call him too. And go call anybody who you know needs teaching. You listen to your pastors, your preachers on Sunday morning. They need somebody who can pass the word to them. It's going to be a wonderful Bible study tonight that you can pass on. If you're not saved... If you're not saved and you're listening to this Bible study, we want to encourage you to stay on. Stay. It's even for you. It's not just for church people. If you're a seminary student who just graduated, congratulations. If you've graduated in any capacity, congratulations. And But we also want you to stay on so you can get this. It's going to help you either tonight, tomorrow, sometime this month, sometime over the course of your life. It's going to help you. All right? So get it, get it. Get it? All right. Let's begin to pray. Take a moment to pray as we give God thanks for his goodness and his mercy towards us today. Is there anybody up in here thanking God for just take, let's take a moment and reflect on his goodness, on his mercy, on where God has brought us from. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's a brand new Amen. month. We are now on the what, 11th day of the month and we give God praise. We want to thank him for bringing us through the last six months as we give him glory and thanksgiving. Yes. It's not because of anything great that we have done, but because of his faithfulness. Yes. Jeremiah said, great is thy faithfulness. Yes. All right. Thy faithfulness is renewed when? Each and every yes. single yes. day. So we give God praise and thanks. Amen. 
Let's just take a moment to pray. Let's just take a moment to pray. Let's get into that moment to pray. Father, we are ever so grateful that you would love us and that you would be so kind towards us. And your kindness exceeds our imagination and the limitedness of our mind or the limitedness of our brain. You are ever so wonderful, you are ever so awesome, and we give you praise and thanks. Not just because you are God, but because of what your word says, that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And we thank you because your presence um, is powerful and it emanates in the midst of us. Your presence is tangible. Your presence is one that we are able to connect with. And your presence is the one that when you are in our midst, we feel your love. We are able to connect with the, the, the exuberance the exuberance of who you are, the exuberance of your glory. We bask in your glory just as Moses did. We bask in your glory just as Jesus did with the other disciples, just as Jesus experienced your glory when you looked down from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased tonight. We give you thanks and glory as we magnify your holy name. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show it your handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night show it knowledge. There is no speech nor language where thy voice is not heard, because thy voice is gone throughout all the earth. In them your word has declared, have you found a tabernacle, and in this tabernacle, your name is glorified. Your name is worthy to be praised. Who is the King of glory? One declares. The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It was asked a second time. The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. And one has declared in another place, let everything that hath breath glorify your holy name. We are in all of the glory of your name that when you breathe every offspring that you create breathes when you laugh everything within this creation of yours find joy and when you decided that everything should be protected you kept us in a safe place and so we thank you, thank you that you keep us and because you kept us safely we give you thanks and we magnify your name because you are worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be uplifted. You are worthy, God, that every breath, every fiber of our being should exalt the mighty name of Jesus. And you said in your words that every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus who is your beloved son, that Jesus, the one who went to Calvary, but Jesus, the one who suffered, the one who was placed upon the cross, the one who endured the nails, the one who was spat on, the one who was beaten with 39 stripes, the one whose clothes were torn, the one who endured the pace, the piercing of the side, the one who said, that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And the same power that's within the name of Jesus is the same power that we call upon tonight that our sins be forgiven, whereas we have fallen in thought, word, and deed. Forgive our sins, whereas we have sinned against our neighbor. Forgive our trespasses, whereas we should have done something and we procrastinated to forgive us. Whereas we should have moved and we stayed, forgive us. Whereas we should have spoken but we held our tongue, forgive us. Whereas we should have stand still and seen the salvation of the Lord but we moved, forgive us. Whereas we have been disobedient in any type of way, forgive us for where we have fallen short. Forgive us for falling short because we have failed to love our neighbor. Forgive us for falling short because we have failed 
to love those whom you have placed in authority. Forgive us for where we fail to put down our gifts when we remember that someone offended us, but we still worship you, not realizing that we're not worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive someone who's listening via Facebook tonight, whereas they may feel the guilt of sin. Forgive them tonight. Someone who may be feeling guilty because they've walked away from ministry. Forgive them. Someone who is feeling guilty because they didn't do something that they were supposed to do for a family member. Forgive them. Someone who felt guilty because a loved one died and they were they failed to tell that loved one they love them forgive them let the let the guilt be erased tonight but they may feel the, the love of your forgiveness that they may feel the love of Abba Father that they may feel your hug around them that they may experience the joy and the grace and the happiness that you want us to experience but tonight when we have this Bible study, would you bring clarity? Would you bring wisdom? Would you bring understanding? Would you help those who are confused tonight that the confusion leave tonight? Would you help the regular listeners tonight that they all of a sudden come to a place of full understanding that whereas it seemed as if it was not clear, tonight let them see that they feel that they have achieved something by listening. Someone who is not saved who's listening to that, would you touch them? Someone who is going on this, this voyage of the Navy and who is in the Marine and who is in any armed forces, would you touch them tonight? But would you give them the protection that they need? Someone who has experienced an accident and the family members are suffering right now, would you touch them in the name of Jesus? Someone who is suffering from gout, someone who is suffering from, oh God, dementia, someone who is suffering from Alzheimer's, someone who is suffering from cancer, someone who is suffering with some sort of ulcer, would you touch them tonight in the name of Jesus? Someone that the doctor says we can't do anything tonight, would you now enter that room, enter that hospice, enter that hospital, enter that nursing home, enter that bedroom, and touch them now in the name of Jesus? Jesus, someone who is experiencing anxiety, depression, someone who's worried how they're going to make it over. Would you touch them tonight in the name of Jesus? Someone who's worried about money, would you be the provider that they need? Someone who felt that they've lost their peace, would you touch them tonight? Someone who's worried because they've lost a job, would you make a way for them in the name of Jesus? We bless your name as we give you glory. And the things I fail to pray for would the Holy Spirit make intercessions now with groanings that cannot be uttered now in the name of Jesus. And we bless you in joy. We bless you in thanksgiving. We bless you in glory. We bless you as we are intentional about lifting up the wonderful name of Jesus. And God, we love you tonight. We love you. We glorify your holy name. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Some pastor who feels discouraged, would you touch him? Would you touch her? Would you touch them in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Wherever they may be ministering, let them see the results of your work tonight. That you are there with them in the name of Jesus. Let there be something I say tonight. Inspire someone. Motivate someone. Lift them up from the dark places. Lift them up. Make them feel encouraged. And wherever Satan has spoken in their ears or some devil or some demon, Lord, would you give them the victory tonight in the name of Jesus. We claim victory for this community of Weeksville. We claim victory for Crown Heights. We claim victory for bed -Stuy. We claim victory for Brooklyn. We claim victory for those living in Manhattan. We claim victory for those living in Queens. We claim victory for those living in the Bronx. We claim victory for those li living in Staten Island. Um, but most of all, we claim victory for those of those who've been blood washed, who's living in the tri-state. We say thank you. But we will hear great stories. Those who are mourning right now because of someone who's passed. Someone who, Lord, they didn't expect and suddenly they died. Some, suddenly
family that transitioned, yes. would you touch this family? Yes. Would you heal them? Would you remind them that you're the perfect comforter for them? Thank you. And someone who's experiencing divorce and experiencing separation, would you touch them tonight too? But they may know that you're the God who brings love, and you're the God who brings mercy, and you're the God who is the fulfiller of all things. Yeah. Would you do it yeah. for all these people tonight you, who's Lord. listening? Would you now do something different in the midst of this church? Something that moves their heart, something that moves their soul, something that moves them to action as they hear the words tonight of your word, your word, not my word, your word, not my word, your word, as we give you all thanks and glory. And the church says amen. Amen. And everybody says amen. Amen. Oh, come on, you can say amen. Amen. You can say amen. Amen. Shout in victory. Say amen. Say amen. 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 We give God praise amen. and thanks. Amen. amen. We thank God. Amen. 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 For the sake of time, we're just going to go right into the Bible amen. study. Amen. And everybody say, it's time for Bible study. Woo! Sabrina, we didn't hear you. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Makes you not excited. Like, Janae, Janae, we didn't hate. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Sister Adams. It's so good to see you again. Amen. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks and praise. Tonight, Bible study, let me just give you the preface to this. Tonight, Bible study is about a wonderful topic and a wonderful topic of healing. Everybody Amen. say healing. 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 So it's a very touchy topic. And the reason why it's very touchy is because a lot of us, a lot of us in the church does not understand this topic of healing. We don't even know where to begin to look. We don't even know how it applies. Is it, is it, is it just for some people? Is it for who does it apply to? Where can I fully understand healing? What does healing mean? Because sometimes we misinterpret to think that healing just relates to when someone has some big sickness, someone has cancer, or someone is suffering from um, any type of um, disease. But really healing in the scriptures as we will investigate for the next couple weeks, I want to show you is that healing does not have to be the ones that pertain to the large sicknesses. There is sickness, there is, sometimes there's sicknesses that is mental, and there is sicknesses that's emotional. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Amen. And then there is sickness that's also very spiritual. And if you don't, if you don't know how to identify how, what's happening, you will miss that there is a sickness that's happening within the body. Hello, somebody. Amen. There is there is sickness that can happen in the body of Christ, right? Amen. Meaning in the church. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And a part of the community of the church. And so I'm asking everybody. So as usual, we're gonna look into the first part of this. I'm gonna do this for three weeks, only because it's such a huge topic, and because the church today needs healing. Amen. In every way. Can I tell you something? That's what I'm telling you. Go get go call your pastor. Go call someone who's in the hospital if they're not in a, in knocked out sleeping. Go get your neighbor. Go rap on your neighbor's house. If you're friendly with them, you should be. If you're a Christian, you should be friendly with your neighbor. Um, go get every all those friends that you have on your Facebook page who you see idling right now. Go send them a message. Tell them they need to listen in because there is so much sickness that's happening. This yes, month, Lord. this month, we're going to... We're going to um, memorialize again the, the Emmanuel 9. Yeah. And, and we said that out of that, it was sickness, yeah. a mental sickness that caused what? This one individual person, I don't even want to call his name, right. to put his name in history, um, who caused the death of nine persons. But usually, if you cause the death of nine persons, you're not causing the death of nine persons. It's a trickle effect because yeah. you're also killing certain people of the family. Yeah. 
Hello? Amen. You know when 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 someone when a loved one dies, there's a certain part of you dies also. I don't know if y'all know that. Absolutely. There's a certain part of you die also. And there's a certain part of you that may get sick also. And that's why healing is important. Y'all not talking to me tonight. That's why healing is important. Sometimes it's it's persons who have experienced sickness and and ask the question, why did I get sick? Hello? Yes. Has anybody ever asked that? Why did I get why did it happen? Who is, who, is, who in here has ever asked that? Okay. Why did it happen to me? Amen. Why why does it have to be me? Amen. Oh, why me? Yep. Amen. Right? You've asked that I know you've asked that question, why me? Yeah. Or you've asked the question, why my son? Why my daughter? Alright? Or you've asked yourself, Ten times to why me, why me, why me? Because you keep getting sick. Mm. And you want to know why is it happening? Some people who get when cancer returns back in their body. Landlord. Right? Yeah. And it comes back, you ask the question, why me? Mm. Right? You, you want to know. And so you want answers to sickness. Mm. And so tonight what we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at some tough questions. Does God allow people to be sick? Mm. Right? Does God allow? I want you to tell me. Talk to us tonight, Facebook. Talk to me, people. Does God allow people to be sick? Does God allow anybody to be sick? Does God allow anybody sickness to just come upon? So you might tell me, um, let me just, I'm just giving an introduction now. You might say, Job, God allowed Job to get sick. God caused Job to, did God make Job sick? No. I love some of y'all talk to me. I heard one now. Did God allow Job to get sick? Y'all know who he Job is, him, right? He made him sick. Huh? He allowed it to happen, but he didn't make him sick. That's correct. He allowed it to happen, but sickness came from where? From sick. From now, be careful what you answer, because <laughs> when you, you see, I always start off very soft, and then it gets hard. <laughs> All right? So, does God... God allowed whom to make whom sick in the Job story. Y'all talk to me. Satan. God allowed Satan. Please remember what she said. Okay. Right? You're the front student. God allowed Satan, Satan to make yes. Job yes. sick. Yes. Everybody agree with that? Yep. So you, would you agree that sickness came from where? Satan. Satan. Alright, so all who is in agreement, just put your hands up that it was Satan. Yes. I sure get my main favor of that. I normally say um, God allow things to happen to us because of our disobedience. Oh, so okay. So things happen to us so we could know that what, where we're going. We're going down the wrong road, so we have to, you know. So you're saying, okay, thank you for that. So what you're, am, am I correct in saying that you're saying that God would allow one person to get sick? Not Something like, let's say, like Jonah. Right. We didn't listen to him. We are not listening. He's talking to us, but we are not listening. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he let things happen to us so we could get on the right track. Right. And that's good. But we're talking tonight about sickness and healing. Right. So would you say that God would allow, from what she said, would God allow you to get sick? Really? Okay, okay, that's good. That's so God would allow. So please give me the answers, God. So now, why would God? Let me just push this out here, since y'all. Why did God allow Job to get sick? Did God really want intent for Job to get sick? No. Okay, good. Why? Because he he knew his faithfulness unto God. Okay, good. He knew that that Job was extremely faithful and that he would do nothing to dishonor God. So it's so a Satan. Right. So did God know this is the question. Did God know that Satan was gonna cause Job to get sick? I'm sure he did. Testing it, I'm sure he did. <laughs> did God know? No. Job that one of the things that Satan was going to do to Job, 
Because I am sure there is no way in the story of Job that God, that Job, Satan came up to God and said, here's a list of things I'm going to do to Job. Just an FYI. He didn't do that. Y'all real quiet on me tonight. Like Y'all know I'm not going to bite y'all tonight. It's okay. Y'all can talk. All right, so go to your handout. All right, so I just want you to think. So we all have heard lines such as, um, maybe God put this sickness on me for what? For some purpose. Y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. Y'all like to say, yes, I've heard it a hundred times. I've, I've heard people say, maybe God caused me to be sick because he wants me to, to live a life of a testimony to somebody. I don't really necessarily believe that. I believe that. Um, okay, this is good. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe that. I believe that. I lost my thought. Oh my God. Okay, we'll come back to you. Yeah. Anybody else? Let's go around the room. What do you believe? I think that because God suffered, we have to suffer as well. Oh. So I don't think that it was basically it's what He wants to happen, but because He suffered, we have, we also have to suffer. You're saying, because God suffered, we all had to suffer. When we're not to. So prior to the crucifixion, right. which is an event, right. right? the crucifixion didn't last, crucifixion only lasted how many? How many days did the crucifixion last? Four, four three days. No. Four? No. Come on, people, y'all help me think. How many days question is, oh, this is good. How many days did the crucifixion last? The crucifixion. The actual crucifixion. The actual crucifixion. Wow. <laughs> Write that question now. Yep. Sabrina should be writing for Ronald. Somebody. How, how many days? Now, come on. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Go back. Let's go back. Let me jog your minds. Let's go back to the moment in Calvary. Was it days? Or was it just a, a couple hours? Until he died. It was more than one day. From 3 p.m. Did you say from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m.? A few hours. That's all he suffered for, really. Right. Or if you want to count from the time that he started getting beatings the night before, right? But that is a crucifixion. That's not a crucifixion. That was just beatings. But did he really, was, did he suffer over time? Yes. No. Show, show me how he suffered over, show me how Jesus suffered over time. What do you mean you say over time? What do you mean? Y'all, she said that because God suffered for us, we have to suffer. So show me how he, I'm looking for how he suffered. He suffered, they threw stones, they, they did all kind of things to him. But wasn't that part of the crucifixion? It's a part of the story, story. of crucifixion. Crucifixion is just hours. hours. Yeah. So the beatings that he got, yeah. right? I'm going to go slow for him. Yeah. was from the night before, right? He got whippings, right? Uh -huh. Are we good with that? Right. He got beatings. Yeah. Then that was like the night before, and then he got crucified the next day, right? right? Then he died in a few hours, okay? Then Saturday nothing happened because it was a rest day. Because what, what was his word on the cross to one of the robbers? Oh, surely you be with me in paradise. When? Um, this day, this day. Yeah, really nice. you will be with me in paradise. paradise. Yeah. So the promise was for this day. Mm -hmm. You understand? So he, so he didn't suffer for many days. Right. Okay. He didn't suffer for many days. You understand? Mm -hmm. He only suffered for a couple of hours, a few hours altogether. Okay. Okay. So, but. The story of crucifixion, you could say, started from the time that he came when they met him in the garden. Of, in the garden, right? I'm just trying to go back slow for y'all. Okay, 
when they met him in the garden, and then after, but it wasn't, did God, the question is, did God really suffer? And the word suffer, what the word suffer means, because he's God, but he took on all the sin of the world. That's what I don't think, if, that's, if that kind of suffering. I think when he is in him on the cross. When but he, what does that mean? Okay, fine, you want to go there. What does that mean? He took on all the sins of the world. Is that suffering? No, I wouldn't say that's suffering. Okay. Of course it's suffering. Okay, good. You said, of course it's suffering. So how is it suffering? Y'all give me scriptures. Y'all talk to me. Bible. They talk. This is Bible study. Talk to me. Okay. Gloria said three hours it took for him to. Thank you, Gloria. That's ex excellent. It's three hours. So he didn't suffer. Jesus didn't suffer, really, for three years or for the 33 years that he was on the earth. All right? He didn't suffer as God. God didn't suffer. Right. So. You can't, it's, it's an okay, error. So I can't use that as that because God suffered, yeah. we too as that's humans right. have to suffer. But that's not true. Okay, that's true. So, the question that I'm, I'm trying to get at is, um, is what's on the paper? Maybe God put this thing of sickness on me for a purpose. Do you, do you think that God would allow do you think that God would allow some people to purposely get sick or to have sickness in their body just to say that they're bringing glory to God? Mm. Y'all understand the question? I often wondered when I got cancer, um, why did he chose me and my family? But then I said... Mm. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Can we dissect that for a second? Sure. I love that. I love what that thing. So you, your thing was, um, you wanted to know why he chose you out of your family, right? Out of your family. And then I said, because he know I could deal with it. That's that's the way I put it. So let me ask you a question. As, so if someone else in your family, God forbid, got it, would you say? They could have dealt with it and not me. No, this is how my, I felt, though. Right. Now I know how you. What Personally. You, right. But, but what if you didn't get it, and then someone else got the cancer? Would you say? Depending on who got it. Oh, depending on who got it. Oh, this is because. <laughs> no, seriously. Depending on who got, who got it. Got it. Yeah. So you. Oh, this is so good. So you're saying. When sickness hits a person, right? When sickness hits a person, it's designated. Hear the word I'm using? It's designated for that individual. It's already. So I'm gonna go back to a Jewish word right it's now. Because already, already, our, our life is already planned for us. So this is what part of the plan. Right. Our life is already planned. Y'all heard that? Somebody else, I need somebody to challenge that for me, please. She said that our life is already planned for us. Right? Hello, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. She said our life is already planned for us. So in your life, sickness may be in it. Would you say that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And would you say that if your life, if part of your life, if part of your life has sickness in it, but it's a part of the plan of God. I would say yes. Sometimes God can test you. I would say yes. Sometimes God Ooh. can test you. Oh! Yes, he can. Here it is now. She says, sometimes God can test you yes, can. with sickness. Yes, he can. Give me a scripture. Job, um, yeah. No, that's, yes. that's incorrect. I can't use that. You're on Facebook. We can't use that. Somebody help me. <laughs> That's not. God didn't test Job. He allowed Job to be tested. He allowed and we covered that. And we covered that. But let me, for correction, listen up, guys. Let me just say this. Thank you for 
God is not. We, we established that when we first said it, right? Remember from Cassidy? Yes, yes. God does not allow anybody to get sick. Mm -hmm. He may authorize it by, because God does not give sickness. God does not give sickness. But the only reason the story came up, and you said it, I'm going to say this again. The only reason that Job went, Job's story is very specific. The only reason Job's story came up, only reason, one story out of how many books in the Bible? One story. The only reason Job's story came up again, Mama Cassidy, is safe for me because you said it. Because yeah. Job was faithful. Because of his faith, his faith, his faith towards, towards God. God. Yeah. So it was, it was, and we said it again. Let me just repeat what I said. We said that there was no way in the story, in that beginning part of the story, that Satan went to God with a list of things that he's going to do to Job. Right. He did. He, right. he did it. Yes, right. he did so please don't get it wrong. Don't say, don't say God tested Job with sickness. Or tried his faith with no. God never did that. The only person who tried Job was who? Satan. Right. God just sat back and watched a movie and says, Have you considered my servant? God never said, Go test him. Please read the scriptures. What's that? Tell her again, please. Sorry. Huh? Faith. Tell her again. Faith. Because out of everybody, out of everybody, out of every, the Bible says in Second Second Chronicles, I think it's nineteen, Second Chronicles, that the the eyes of the Lord move to and fro on behalf of those who are faithful on behalf of those who fear him. Mm -hmm. So in that particular story, Job appeared to be the only one. Because look at Job's wife. She said what? Curse your God. Curse your God. Curse your God. God. Job's friends disappointed God. Yes, question. So was God testing his faithfulness? God, let me say this again. So God never tested him. God never... Satan, God had a hedge around. God had a read the story again. God had a hedge around Job, right? And God says, Satan came, and God asked Satan a question. That's how the whole story started. Because if God never asked Satan a question, Job would have been sick in the first place. Y'all want the truth? So God says. Satan says, yeah, the only reason he's faithful is because you have the hedge around him. Mm -hmm. Remove the hedge of protection and you're going to see what's good. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, I'm going to remove the hedge. He says, you can do what? Anything, Anything to him but just to take his life. Mm -hmm. So he opened the door to anything happening to him. So Satan decided he was going to do the worst of things. What are the three things that you can do to a person that would make them walk away from God? Y'all tell me. It's right there in the story of Job. Since y'all think it was God, it was God don't test. Let me see this Facebook. God don't test anyone. God doesn't do that. What does God do? If you curse him. No. I'm just asking a different question. God don't. I, I really got to go back to the. God don't test. Does God test you? No. What does he do? Somebody help them from Facebook. God don't test nobody. It's right there in the New Testament. God is getting our attention to testify on his truth. Set Close. Me. Come on, Gloria, help me out. Um, let's go. Help me out. God don't test nobody. What does God do? He uses. Bible says, "Give when any man says that I'm tempted of God." Y'all ever heard that scripture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't 
one says, the Bible says it. Be careful when one says, God has tempted. Let me put it in the contemporary version. Be careful when people say, God tried me, God tested me, God tempted me. Because God doesn't do that. Who does it? Satan. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Enemy. God allows, because God has this, God expects your faith to be grounded. That's why he says, I'm, I'm strained right now, but I'm going to come back. That's why he says, you have to put on, it's in the same thing. I, see, I don't want to keep helping your baby feed y'all. The Bible says, put on the whole arm. Put on the helmet. Put on the breastplate. Put on the, the, the sandals. Put on the, the belt. Put on, lift up the sword. He says, lift up all these things. Because, why? Because the enemy does what? Why do you have to put on the army in the first place? Protect yourself against the enemy. There you go. But what does the scripture say you're going to do? So you're going to be able to withstand. Withstand what? The evil. No, give me what the scripture says. See, that's my own point. No. Withstand the fiery doubts. Because he keeps, he keeps doing what? The more he shoots at you. The more he shoots at you, he's expecting you to break down. The more he shoots at you, after a while, you're going to get what? Tired. So let's go back to my original question. Not my original. One of my favorite. What are the three ways that a person can give up on God? It shows it right there on, 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 in the story of Job. What are the three ways? What are the three ways a person will give up on their faith in God. It's right there in the story of Job. Sickness, loss of family, um, loss of your wealth. That's it. Right. Sickness in your body. That's why we're talking about healing tonight. Mm -hmm. Sickness in your body. Because that's why people ask the question, why did this happen to me? And they blame God. They blame God for their sickness. And God has nothing to do. The truth is... The truth is world. The truth is Facebook. The truth is social media. The truth is Bethel Tabernacle. God will not inflict sickness on you just to test you or to tempt you or to make his will, or like how y'all like to say, make his will come to pass to bring him good. God is not interested in that. What was the three things? Sickness in your body? Sickness in your body. Destruction of your family. I could put that, let me put that a different way. Um, um, let's say rivalry in your family. When you're in your fa family, is at discord, according to Proverbs. And the third one is loss of wealth. When you can't even get a job, you can't, you can't make ends can't meet. You keep losing the job, you keep losing everything. You wonder, you're asking the question again. Why is this happening to who? To me. To me. You ask yourself that too many times. Watch this. Darts. Come shooting at you. Come shooting at you. Guess, what's, guess who's getting tired? I am. I'm tired of doing this, Reverend Cassidy. Yeah. And he ain't stopping. He don't stop. And, he, and then guess what? The honest truth is, if the, the demons... Keep getting at you, getting at you, getting at you, getting at you. The Bible tells you the strong man, if they make the strong man weak, they will take over the house. Amen. And guess what the house is? Yes, yes, this. Is the body. If they bind the strong man, this, if they take this over, you're in a bad place. Bible says, Bible says, notice how I keep saying it, the Bible says, when a man cleans out his house, he sweeps it out all clean, gets rid of some dirty stuff that's in his house, Vanessa, cleans it out, talking like Bernie Mac, cleans it out, <laughs> cleans it out, and guess what, the demon leaves, goes in some places, 
Because your house is clean now. You think, I got over the bad habit. I got over the crack. I got over the sickness. You got over the, the hog moths. You got over the chitlins. So the Lord knows I'm done with the hog moths and the chitlins. I never mess with those things anymore because I, I got my blood pressure down. The next thing you know, summertime comes around. And they invite you to the, some park in Brooklyn. And Lord knows the hog moths is on, on the grill. <laughs> And the chitlins and the and the, um, the, 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 the the macaroni and cheese sizzling. And you know the doctor tell you not to mess with that. But it looks really good. Just the just a little bit. It looks really good. <laughs> and you say just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just, a, just, a, just a little bit here. Don't take a little bit. Just a little bit. You clean the house out. Your doctor says you're good. Your doctor says you're good. Your blood pressure is great. Your diabetes is under control. Everything is good. And guess what? You go mess with that old boyfriend. You go, <laughs> talk about you, you go You go mess with this old person. You go mess with the, the chitlins. I'm not blaming chitlins. Chitlins just come in my mind. I love my chitlins. And, and you go do something else. And guess what? That old demon comes back and says, you know what? You didn't learn your lesson the first time. So you know what we're going to do? We are here to stay. So this time when the cancer comes back, you ever heard cancer comes back with a vengeance? Yeah. Or sickness comes back with a vengeance? Yeah. Or you went back to the ex and now he start beating you more? Mm. He, this first time he used to give you a nicer push. But now he fisted you. Mm. Now you let back your son in the house who had who had a crack problem. And guess what? Now you sell all your sofa. Mm. You come in the house and you wonder where all your chairs at. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you should have put him out. Yeah. Now it's back. All your money. Next you left your debit card in the house in the wrong place at the wrong time. And guess what? His eyes met the debit card and they introduced themselves to each other. And when they introduced themselves to each other, he got the seven demons and they went and they spent that on seven cracks. The first place is worse. This time, the second is worse. The sickness comes back with a vengeance. That's why when, when, it, when your doctor tells you Careful what you eat. Yeah. And you say, oh, I'm going to just do it this one time. And you end up in a hospital and ask you, what's the next question I ask you? How did you get what? Here. Yeah. How did you end up here? Mm -hmm. I tried yeah. asking a dead person once. How did you end up here? They didn't answer me back. My doctor said, when I get leaves messed up again, I just gave a shot. See? I said, I can't stretch. He said, get out of my walk. I said, but I suppose he's shuffled. But I went back the second time and it got worse. <laughs> Same thing. It's, it's, yeah. God didn't tell you to go eat that hog moss. <laughs> God didn't tell you to go back to that person who would abuse you. God didn't tell you to let back that son in and that person who has been abusive to you. God didn't say that to you. Yeah. That's not a test. It's not a test. That's not on testing. There was one story, I'm going to just jump in. In this place. I'm going to just jump over here. Only one time in the New Testament, one single time in the New Testament, y'all hear me out. How many times? One. I need y'all to say it in your head so y'all hear it. One time do we see that Jesus said um, that something was for the glory of God. And y'all remember that story? Yes. Yes. The blind man. Yes. The, if y'all can tell me another story where Jesus said the man, this man is sick, y'all help me out. And also, also that when, when he was raised on Lazarus, he said yeah. this is for the glory of God. When he said he, 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 he could have went he, back he there when they called for before, him to come, but he, but he wanted them to see the glory, the glory of God. He be waiting four days. Yes. Uh, 
Oh, Lord Jesus, help me out. Help me on Facebook. All right. Um, let's look at the story of Lazarus. Let me help you out. Was Lazarus sick? Yes, he was. He got sick. Lazarus died. He died. He died. Stay right there. Lazarus died. Right. Lazarus, y'all say with me. He did. He did. He got buried. Um, before, let me just tell you how it works in Jewish culture. How many days did Jesus wait? Please listen on Facebook. Please listen, church. Please, that's... In this season, I know I'm going to throw some things that's challenging to you and to you and to you and to you. But it's, it's going to help you. And it's to awaken you out of what you normally would hear, but if you go read it, you would see that what I'm telling you is not to confuse you, but to help you. Okay. How many days did Jesus wait to go see Lazarus? Four days. Four days. Good. What is the norm? What is the norm? What is the norm in Jewish culture that they still believe a man can. You all hear the question? In the Jewish culture, they believe that if you've been dead three days, it's possible for you to come back. So Jesus purposely waited four days. Because after four days, the canker worm and every other worm and every other matter and every other nasty stuff that's eaten out of your body has already worked the night shift on you. That's why what were the words that Mary said to Jesus? If you come early. No. By now, he what? He stinks. Because his body is rotten. So Jesus his for the glory. We're not talking. Death is not sickness. Death is death. death, is death. Sickness is one thing. Death, I want y'all to pay attention to this. Death is a whole different story. Mm -hmm. If I am dead, you no longer say I'm sick. Right. You say I'm what? You're dead. You're dead. I'm dead. You don't say, oh, he's sick. He just, he just, he just not breathing right now. <laughs> We're just going to wait until he gets up because he's sick. I don't know why he's pretending to be dead. He's sick. He dead. Hello, somebody. Amen. He's dead. So Jesus purposely waited when it was impossible. Y'all hear me out. Impossible for the culture to say, oh, he was just traveling. You understand? Yeah. He didn't see, y'all ever hear them saying this in this, oh, he didn't see the white light yet. Mm. They say that, right? He didn't see the white light. Hello, somebody. If you're rotten, the only way that you could come back is for the almighty God to bring you back. Amen. There's a difference between the story of Lazarus and sickness. He's rotten dead. So God is saying, that's why he said purposely, that I am the what? Resur hear the words. Hear the words. Hear the words. Hear the words. I am the resurrection and the what? The life. Never in that did he say, I am the resurrection and the one who brings you back from sickness. You got to pay attention to scripture. I am the resurrection. Resur the only way resurrection applies if there is death. If any other person is sick, Jesus goes in, he says, get up. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. But this is a death situation that has passed the normal a lot of time for you to get up. Because there's nobody in here or on Facebook is going to go to the graveyard after four days and say, you know, my grandmother has been dead for the last four days, and since Jesus did it for Lazarus, I'm going to do it for her because she can get up. As a matter of fact, if they did it for you, we just bring a stretcher for you with a special suit. 
You're not going to do that. That's not sickness. That's death. Y'all got that? Yeah. All right, we need to move so on. I mean, okay. Her question is, if I believe that, what's your question? People could be resurrected. People could be resurrected. Today. So here's how I'm going to, the question I'm going to ask you, have you seen it? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, I'm going to caution you on some things. I'm going to caution you on something. It's one thing when the scripture tells us that God has given us the power to do what? Heal the sick. Heal the sick, raise, raise the, dead, the dead, all these things. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to, to hear somebody has been raised in Africa. Because if you can come to me and say, there is someone right here in the United States or in the Caribbean who was raised from the dead. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And you have seen the person. And now I'm going to quote R.W. Shambach on this. One, to me, one of the greatest evangelists who have ever lived. R.W. Shambach used to say, it's a big difference when you hear someone who was healed from a sickness. And there's another big difference when you meet the person. And you say, wow. Read the story of Lazarus. It says that people came to see if he was really raised. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Because people can spread news these days. Oh, and I've asked, people have asked me all kinds of questions. So you don't believe that. I believe a lot of things. I believe in UFOs. Do you believe in UFOs? I do. I believe that there's other planets out there. I do too. I believe in a whole bunch. But I've never seen it. I've never seen it. So to apply it to the story, to the story of my life is unnecessary. I've, I've, I don't, there's so many shulligans in the sense, in the church today that says, oh, people have been raised. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Should be don't keep coming up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Come on up. Yeah. See Tucker turned out. <laughs> Something coming up. You know, um, that says that people have been raised from the dead and they all do all these things. As a matter of fact, um, I've heard a story. I've, again, I've heard a story where someone says, um, Jesus says, the Bible says that if I touch any dangerous things, right, that if I touch snakes and scorpions, that it will not harm me. So Sister Harrison, this person went and picked up a scorpion. Hmm. Guess what happened to them? They, they went to the, a nice cold refrigerator. They died. Now, is that, was that foolishness? That was right, because that wasn't in context. <laughs> what do you mean it wasn't in context? The Bible said it, right? Yeah, but like you always say we have to put everything in context, but that is not in context, that they are literally going to do that. But in, in that period, This was a preacher. Yeah, because he's a preacher, it doesn't necessarily mean he can't take things out of context. <laughs> How did he take it out of context? Because he's taking it literally. Oh! But what does the Bible mean? <laughs> but is it true, though? How are you going to say you took it literally? Yes, it is. What's on? No, right? Oh. Um, it's the same thing with, with saying, have, asking me the question if I believe someone can be raised from the dead. Do I believe that literally? Or do I believe contextually? Which one are you asking? Which one are you saying? Both. It, <laughs> you got to make up your mind, sister. <laughs> All right, so we got to move on. All right, what time is it? Oh, quarter past. Great. All right, are we, how are we doing so far? Good. All right, um, 
The question is, let's look at B, and then we're going to go down. Understanding healing in the Bible, is it for some, is it for all? Is healing for some, is it for all? It's for all. Okay, so notice the life and the stories of Jesus as the healer. Let's look. So who says for all? Who says healing is for all? Put your hands up. Okay. Oh, he, he changed. He changed. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina, you're not calling this anymore. You're back to building. Oh, uh, okay. So, Sabrina, what do, what do you say? Which side of the fence are you on? Pick a fence or the white fence? <laughs> you gotta get on one. Exactly, you gotta choose one. Which Don't one are you on? Don't be afraid to be wrong, girl. Exactly. This That's is. Why we have this, we're here tonight to learn. That's it. This, this is not. That's it. That's, that, this is not to say in your face you're wrong. You've never heard me say you're wrong. No. No, so I'm not gonna say you're wrong. I might say you need correction. <laughs> I say you need correction. And, and the only reason, please understand this. The only reason I say you need correction because if I if I, I can't allow you, if I'm here to continue in what is known as an error. Yes. It, I can't allow, I would not. It's up to you after I tell my responsibility is to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. Whether you want to hold on to it or not, or maintain the way you're thinking, that's fine. I'm not gonna say, well, that's you know, it's it's up to you. So go on. Which side of the fence do you want? Is healing for all or is it for some? Healing. We're talking about healing tonight. Is it for everybody or is it for some? You say understanding healing in the Bible. So yes, it's for all. Oh, great. Okay, she says for all. What do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not an answer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sister Reverend Casney, what do you I say? I said no. You 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 first said yes and then now you if I was like that. Mean, I'm back to you. What do you say? This is not like a church conference where you have to <laughs> where you can it's for all who believe. It's for all who believe. So it's not for the non believers. Y'all hear this? That's not true. It's not for the well, no, don't say it's not true. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not for the non believers That's sorry, what you're I saying. Don't I, I disagree. You're going to use words such as disagree. I might be wrong, but I'm sorry. Yes. All right. We do outside? So Adams, yes. what do you say? Is it for all or is it for some? I think it is for all. Okay, good. What do you say, sister? Is it for all? You would say for all? Yeah. So which one is it? You would say or you say? <laughs> I got the all the fence. <laughs> I guess I would. Yeah. Which they're one is they're it? They're <laughs> all right, let's look at. They don't want to be wrong. <laughs> let, let's look at Luke. Chap, get your Bibles. Gloria, get your Bibles. Every preacher out there, get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Stop just listening. Get your Bibles. Get your notebook. I see you preachers out there. I see you. I see you. Get your Bibles. Get your, no, no, not the one on your phone. Get your real Bible. Get your Bible. Okay, good. It's right there in scripture. What she says? Nothing. Oh. All right. Get your Bible. Luke 4, 27. What does Luke 4, 27? Y'all read it for me. During the time of the prophet Elijah. During the time of the prophet Elisha. Elijah. It's Elisha, not Elijah. Elijah. Many men in Israel had leprosy. Many who? Many men. Many, Many men, men in Israel, in Israel, had, Israel leprosy. had leprosy. But no one was healed. But no one was healed. Naaman. Except whom? Naaman, who lived in Syria. Except Naaman. Except Naaman. Except who? Except Naaman. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all got to say about that? I guess it wasn't for all. <laughs> <coughs> Somebody go to Matthew. We, this is the good thing about looking at these texts. We're dealing with healing, and we're going to do it in three parts for three weeks, which is important. 
So tonight I just want to uncover the surface for those of you, and you better pay attention. I'm asking seriously to pay attention because it's going to help somebody who's going to get sick in your family, and you're going to remember tonight's teaching, or you is going to remember. But tonight I just want to uncover some myths, myths, and, and filibusters that's out there to help you come to the truth. Is that okay? I really, because this is, you're going to go back to your church pastors and leaders and teach this. But you've got to stay on for the three weeks. You've got to stay on for the three weeks. Because at the end of the three weeks, you will do seminars on this. It will help you. Y'all got this, right? Yeah. But tonight, I'm just, I'm challenging you because I need you to bypass some of the nuances. And you're going to see that when you get sick, what you can do. When you get sick, and by say it with me, when you get sick, what you can do. What you can do. Okay, good. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. All right? Everybody got it? Matthew chapter 4. Corey, you got it? You can't see any of your glasses? Okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it, I'll read it. I'm reading the NIV version. Everybody got it, right? Yeah. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and doing what? Healing. Also healed. Healing. Healing. All manner of disease. Healing. Okay, some say all manner of disease, right? Mm -hmm. And sickness among the people. Does it say here anyway that he was healing everybody? No. No. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases. Please pay attention. Those suffering severe pain, that's what my version says, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. What did y'all notice there? Let's read that again. Oh, y'all want me to read it in the King James Version? No. Y'all, no. y'all, what did somebody break down what I just read? Somebody break that. Matthew chapter four, verse twenty-three. If you've ever been sick, if you've ever been hospitalized, if you've ever had any type of severe sickness or been hospitalized in a hospital for days, you need to read this. If anybody in your family has mental disease, if anybody in your family has any type of disease, I don't care what it is, you gotta read it. Read it. Let's go. Read it again, right? Yeah. I'm gonna read from verse 24. Is that okay? Yeah. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who are ill with what? Various disease diseases. Watch this. Please pay attention to this. Those suffering severe pain, mm -hmm. the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed. How many different things is that? No. Let's go over it again. I purposely wanted to dissect it for y'all so y'all see that. Let's go. Diseases, severe pain, and demon possession. Oh, bottom all various disease, disease, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Yeah. That's as if he had a Benny Hain revival, and he put them all in this section over here. Y'all see that? Yeah. And he says, and he healed them. And he healed, y'all notice that, right? But he never said he did what? He healed all. My oh, what does your sister say? He healed them. My sister's different. No, all. all that he came to that him. came to him says that he healed all that came to him. That's still good because all who came to him is different from all. That were sick. Y'all yeah. got that? Yeah. Quite, look at the paper that I wrote. Uh, I said on this, look at your hand now. Uh, I think. 
Look at A. Did Jesus ever turn any sick person away? No. No, he never did. He never did. And that's what we just saw. That all who came to him, he healed. Right? Okay, we got that. All right. Um, let's go down to number one. How do we understand what sickness is versus healing? Now look at the next, the follow-up. Is it individual, community, national? Give an example. And I gave you a good starter right there. I said, think of Egypt, give examples, think wilderness, give specific story. Let's go. How do we understand sickness Versus healing. Is it individual? Is it community wise? Is it national? And I said, give examples. Think Egypt. Y'all understand the question, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's 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 dissect the story of Egypt. <coughs> what was happening in Egypt when Moses showed up? No, I, I, slavery has nothing to do with the sickness part. Let's, let's talk about the sickness. Come on, people. All right, let me help you out. All right, how many plagues were there? Plagues. Plagues. How many? She ten. said a hundred. The plagues. Ten. Ten. Okay. Y'all sure? Yeah. 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 <laughs> she said it's been such a. She said it's been such a long time since. I've been reading about the plagues since I was in Sunday school, and I'm only forty right now. You still talk about plagues right now? I ain't got no time. You know, I didn't watch the Ten Commandments since. Since back then, 2001. And you talk about plagues? I don't remember about plagues. I don't know if it was 10 plagues, 7 plagues, or 100 plagues. There was how many plagues? Good. Out of those plagues, how many were sicknesses? Oh, she says, let me think. Ding, 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 ding. Would you like to choose from section one? <laughs> A. Out of the plagues. Yes. No, Gloria said the angel of death. I don't know, and she gave her answer um, 12. The 12. I guess she was answering the, how many plagues. I guess she got it. How many plagues were there? Ten. Ten. Okay. Gloria, yes, death was one. Oh, Lord, that woman is at home and she got, she beat you up. <laughs> um, give me another one. I know, but the word of the cross was something that was it, that was it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, people. Come but on. Water turn, no, he said sicknesses, right? Sicknesses. Yeah. Go to Exodus. And I forgot. I know. <laughs> they said, let me tell you what they're saying, because I know they don't have bikes. They said they learned them so long that they forgot. They haven't read Exodus since God made it happen. <laughs> last, time they read, last time they read Exodus is when the angel showed up <laughs> and put the blood in and said, put the blood at the door. That's the last time they read Exodus. <laughs> Exodus. What chapter? Y'all want the chapter? <laughs> 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 I was thinking. <laughs> Listen. Read it. <laughs> read it before. As long as you read it before.
Psalm chapter 15. Where you at, bro? He's having a birthday. Oh, man. Exodus chapter 1. Y'all know what Exodus chapter 1 is about. These are the sons of Jacob. And there was a new Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. Chapter 2. Thank you very much. Chapter 3. That's the what? Thank you very much. See, I don't even have a Bible open. <laughs> Chapter 4. Chapter 5. The children of Israel believe. Bricks are both strong. Anybody who can make the bricks are both strong. Yes, chapter 6. The promise of deliverance. Thank you very much. Chapter 7. I am and before Pharaoh. Thank you very much. Chapter 8. Thank you very much. Thank the plague of the frogs. Please. Okay, let's go there now. Did anybody get any boils on their skin? Yes. Yes. She, she says yes. She didn't even know where it is. She just says yes. Is there any boils? Okay, good. Was that a sickness? Yes. Okay. Um, what else? I asked. So Gloria gave us help y'all with one death. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because who died? The firstborn. All the firstborn. She said insects. Locusts, but that was not Well, that just that just infected. That was a sickness. Oh. One of the sickness. There were two main sicknesses. Thank you very much. All right. So that would you say was that individual or would you say that was what? Thank you. That was national. That's the, what the question is. So who needed healing? The nation. The nation needed healing. Y'all see that? Give me another. Give me another story where. Um, yeah, that one's gonna be too complicated for you. Let me just take it out. Remember, we had nothing to do with seminary. Would you say? Sodom and Gomorrah. See? Would you say Sodom and Gomorrah? Would you say Sodom and Gomorrah was one of sickness? Ooh, wee! Y'all know what type of week last week was. It could be, it could be, um, not I think only the morality. morning sickness there. It could be what? I think it's talking about morality, yes. Morning sickness there. Spiritual and was yeah. moral. Wickedness. Y'all know Don't what? Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking y'all. Was it? Solomon Gomorrah. Was it? Was it physical sickness? Was it? What type of? Was that? Let's look at the question. The question is, everybody say question. Question. Did they have a sickness that needed healing? Sickness versus, was it individual? Was it community? Or was it national? Solomon Gomorrah. Community. Okay, I agree. What else? But what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? What was the, so your class, you said, yo, not me. You said that they had moral sickness. And what else? <laughs> <laughs> Last week. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't um, physical sickness like bad diarrhea or whatever. Like the thing was, if we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. could just find one that was righteous. But he couldn't find one that was righteous. So it was. Or what type of sickness would you spiritual. call? Spiritual. Spiritual sickness. I'll take that. Thank you. All right. I don't want to go deep in that because that could <laughs> open up a can of worms you're not ready for. Um, all right. Let's yes. move on. Everybody, go to everybody. Everybody. When I say everybody, I mean you too. Gloria, all you preachers. Deuteronomy, what? 28. But we're going to read from verse 7 first. 
Deuteronomy. Say it after me. Deuteronomy. <laughs> it's not in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. Before what book? Numbers. No, it's not before Numbers. <laughs> it was after Numbers. I said before. Oh, yeah, before Numbers. Yeah. And before what book? Joshua. Joshua. You over there hiding. Joshua. Deuteronomy. Everybody goes to Deuteronomy. Okay, I want to read it. I have a special Bible that I brought tonight. For the message? No, it's called the. Um, Life application. Oh, what? Okay. New Living Translation. Oh, okay. It's called what? Life application. Life application. Life application. Yeah, this, this Bible was gifted to me many, many years ago, okay. moons ago. And at first, when I got it, I had a problem trying to read it because it was so plain. If you want to understand a Bible that's very plain and down to earth, this is it. What, where, where, where are we reading? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Please make a note of all these. Please. It will help you. Are you all getting something tonight? Absolutely. All right, so this is where Deuteronomy 28 consists of the last speech, the last Moses gave three speeches within the book of Deuteronomy. Please make a note of that, because I'm going to ask you next week, and you've got to know this. Three speeches. One of the speech is from chapter 1 to chapter 4. Please notice preachers. I'm going to ask you all this when we have preachers meeting. From chapter 1 to chapter 4. Chapter 1 to chapter 4 to like chapter 4. I think chapter 4 goes like down way past 36, somewhere around there, Deuteronomy from chapter 1 to chapter 4, okay? Then, the second speech is from chapter 4, 36, all the way up to around chapter 26. And the third speech goes from, say, 26, verse... Say about, let me go, give me a second. I want to say yes. Say, oh, no, 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 no. Say up to chapter 26, and then the last speech, I would put it, goes from Deuteronomy 27 to chapter 33. Chapter 33. Okay? And Moses died in chapter 34. Okay? Why can't Moses speak in chapter 34? Thank you, Jesus. You all know that one. That was, hallelujah. <laughs> they got that one right. They got that one right. They got that one right. I asked them, why couldn't Moses speak in chapter 34? They said, because he's dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. They got one right tonight. I give God thanks and praise. Stand up! Hey! Hey! Do it again. Woo! They got one right. <laughs> All right. Um, chapter. So 28 is a very serious chapter um, because it outlines blessings and curses. Yes. But I want to bring to you, the reason why I wanted to point this out, because it's going to establish the foundation of what we're going to be discussing the next two weeks. That sickness comes upon us because we fail to be obedient to certain things. Watch this. Please don't miss this. We we fail to be oh, this. We fail to be obedient to what God says. Number one, to what our doctor says, and number three, to what our body is saying to us. And our body would signify the the law of the land, the law of the land. 
careful with what I'm saying. Please make a note of it. What God says, that's the spiritual, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or what our doctor says, that would be the authority, the earthly authority. Y'all got that? Yeah. And what our body is saying, that because you're, you're, who knows that our body gives us signals? Oh, all the time. Oh, all the time. Yeah. All the time. Our body gives us messages. Yeah. That I go to the gym now, like really hard. Say, so my body at my age, I can't overdo it. Like I'm 21, right? Because that would be detrimental to me. Because my heart rate is not that of a 21 year old. Y'all got that? Yeah. If your doctor says stop eating certain things because it's not good for you, guess what you're supposed to do? Stop eating it. Stop eating. It. Because the Lord puts people in charge of certain... Now you've got to use this question because sometimes the doctor says, take this pill, and this pill is not good for you. Right? Y'all agree? Yeah, that's a doctor looking for money. Right, doctor, exactly. So I, um, I had a doctor misdiagnose me for years, but thank God his hand was on me anyways. You know, so I, I don't know how I... Because that was just weird to me. Um, how he misdiagnosed me. So, but God was good. God is good. Amen. Okay, look at this. So, I want to read from verse 7 in this version. Where are we? Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy 28. You, if you don't get your Bibles and you don't read it, you're just going to be participating and not really getting it. So, I need you to get this because your life will change. Your neighbor's life will change. Those people who were rapping at your door at midnight begging you for money, they will stop. But I need you to get this. I need you to get this because you're going to stop being broke. Those of us who are very broke. You're going to stop wondering why you always get sick. You're going to stop wondering why you keep getting a job and you're losing it and everybody in the job don't like you. They don't like you because you don't like yourself. Because you're not listening to God. Because you're not listening to what you're... Your, 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 your self is telling you. You don't like yourself. Your body is sending out messages. Hello, somebody. Amen. All right? I'm not telling you all anything, Mom. I'm just telling you all, giving you all the, the right truth here. All right? You all ready? Yeah. Okay, but while you, you all, this will, this will mess your version up, so, but I want to read so you get it. So just pay attention. Here it is. The Lord, I'm reading from verse 7, so make a note of it when you go home. Yeah. Highlight it. Actually, I read from verse 6. Deuteronomy 28. Actually, I read from verse 1. It gets better. I'm sorry. Every time I look at it, if you fully obey the, the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience, pay attention, all these blessings. If, if, keyword, if, uh -huh. if, somebody shout if. If. If you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Remember we're talking about what? National and community. Mm -hmm. Your children and your crops will be blessed. Who will be blessed? Your, your children, children and your crops. Your grandchildren, the offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Where, pay attention to this. Wherever you go and what, whatever you do. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. I never wrote those words. Wherever you go, Vanessa, even when you go somewhere and enjoy a nice room <laughs> on a ship or upstate, in that nice cozy room that you put on Facebook with all its amenities. <laughs> wherever you go, you, know wherever you, do, you will be what? Blessed. Bless. Verse 7. The Lord, watch this, watch this. When you are having problems wondering why people don't like you, watch this. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they what? Right. Attack right. you. But look at this. They will, they will attack you from oh. one direction.
but they will scatter from you in what? Seven. 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 In other words, people, Sabrina, pay attention. Currently, pay attention. Bullet pay attention. People will attack you. People will say things about you. Yeah. People, it says here, when they will attack you. You get it? Yeah. They will scatter in what? Seven. Amen. The, watch this. Verse 8 says, the Lord will carry. Oh, Lord. If I read this on a Sunday morning, I'd be just going crazy. <laughs> the Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your, your storehouses with grain. In other words, your bank accounts. In other words, your pension account. In other words, the money that you're saving up, you will see growing. The Lord will bless you in the land or in the house. I gotta put this in a contemporary version, okay? Or in the apartment, or in the housing, or in wherever you live that he gives you. Y'all see that? Amen. But it says here in verse 9, if you obey the commands of the Lord and do what? And walk in his ways. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he swore he would do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe. Y'all see that? Yeah. They will stand in awe of you. Amen. Okay, but you can read the rest when you go, but let's get on to verse 15 for the sake of time. But if you do not. <laughs> but I told you last week that there is a blessing to do and a curse not to do. Yeah. I don't know if y'all remember that. There is a blessing to do and a curse not to do. But watch this now. But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey what? All the commands and decrees I'm giving you today. Watch this. All these curses will come and over. over my version says overwhelm you. Watch this, watch this. I gotta give it to y'all in the real. Y'all ever had one problem that hits you and then all of a sudden, another one come? Yeah, yeah, and another yeah. one come? Yeah. And then y'all say what? When it rains, it pours? Oh, yeah. Like, that's like my sister who broke one bone, then she got a blood clot, and she broke another bone, <laughs> then her high blood pressure went up, then her husband got into a car accident, and then her daughter got, I don't know, and then and then something else happened, and then she lost money from work, and then all these, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When it rains, it what? Pours. Pours. It's the same thing you're saying here. When you begin to have one, okay, let me put it in a different sense. It's like the person who catches a sickness, right? First thing you get is worry. Watch this, watch this, pay attention. Oh my God, why did I get this? Then you go to the doctor. Do you have health insurance? No. Um, okay, you have health insurance. Your health insurance is not going to pay for this. What? They're not going to cover this? No. Oh my God. How much does this medication cost? $300. You mean for how many pills? Two pills. Yeah. Two pills? $300? <laughs> then you get your paycheck. Your paycheck is only $600. Wait, wait, wait. You got your rent to pay. You got food to buy. You got utilities to pay. You, you don't know how you're going to make it. If you drive a car and you have a car note, you don't know how you're going to make it. The, the pastor telling you you got to tithe. If you don't tithe, you get cursed. And then next thing you know, you're going to be like, oh, Lord, where am I going to get this money? And then you're wondering, which one do I do? You got to get the medication. Your doctor says, hey, you got to pay a copay. And you only got $15 in your bank, but the medication costs $300. You go home. You go to work tomorrow. You go to work, somebody gives you an attitude. Your boss comes up and tells you, hey, that type of attitude is not welcome here. So I guess you got to make a choice to leave. <laughs> and we can give it to you by 3 p.m. today. Okay? Oh, you can leave now. 
As a matter of fact, we would prefer that we would like to have a good working environment so if you could leave the property now and gather all your goods, do not take anything that belongs to us, but take everything that's yours and we will escort you out. You leave, you get home, you start screaming at everybody in your house. Okay, y'all get the message. Amen. Thank you, sister, for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay, look at this. I have a couple more minutes and we're done. Okay, verse 16. Um, your tiles and your field will be what? Cursed. Your fruit basket and bread bowls will be cursed. Your children and your crops will be cursed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be cursed. You all see that? Everything that you were supposed to get a blessing, you get the what? The reverse. Whatever you do, verse 19 says, you will be cursed. The Lord himself will send on you, watch this. Please pay attention to verse 20 when you go home. Please. Please. The Lord will send on you curses, confusions, and frustration in everything you do until you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me. Y'all see that? That's not to scare you or to scare anybody. That's just to tell you that God does not want you to engage in things where it's going to distract you away from him. So because when you do that, you're only going to turn against him. And doing so is going to bring confusion to your life. And then you get sick. And then you end up blaming God. Mm. And God already told you, hey, if you do these things, these are the results of what's going to happen. Yeah. And nowhere here yet did any mention of Satan or demons mm. or devils. It's first thing of how people get tonight's lesson on healing. First thing of how people get sick is disobedience. Mm. First thing. Right off the bat. Come back next week, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Amen. And we'll give you the rest. Amen. Tonight lesson. Watch what's happening with your obedience and your disobedience. And you will see what's happening at your work, your family, your job, and everything else. And you will get the answer and see. And if that's where it is, you just have to simply say, God, I'm confused. I thought I had it. I don't have it. Help me. God will make a way for you. I promise you. It's in the word of God. Tonight's lesson is about healing. Amen. Healing that's going to start with God. Healing that's going to draw you back to God. If you do that, God will make a way for you. I promise you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, we encourage you tonight, tonight, to make a decision. Go back over Deuteronomy 28. Go back over Luke 4, verse 27. Go back over Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. Go back over those scriptures and you will see, you will see. I'm telling you my brother, I'm telling you my sister, but God is interested in you being healed and you living a complete life and you living a life that is beneficial to you and your family and your friends. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me. I believe you died, I believe you were raised. That's it, save me. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. I encourage you to find a church home. If you can't find one, I encourage you to come right here at 90 Schenectady Avenue. We are right off of Atlantic, right next to Pacific and Dean, all right? Oh, you can just Google us. Hey, Google is everything these days. Google it. You can find it. Google will never. If Google disappoints you, you are lost. I promise you. So please, come here Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., 1059 if you're usually late. We will welcome you. Let me know that you're here and you visited us and what our Bible study did for you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for all those who participated. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Regina O's. Thank you, all pastors. Thank you. We love you. We love you. God bless you. This has been Bethel Bible Study, a production of Bethel Tabernacle. Be out. We love you.